is this? Tabletop Island. Let's see what this is all about. You're trapped in a house where there are 45 of the world's monsters waiting to terrify you. You must make it through the maze and fight creatures more frightening in each passing room. You win by stabbing your sword into the death head and hearing a scream. However, some of you may not be as lucky. Be the first to escape or else you'll be trapped for all eternity. Horror House by Action GT. Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Renardo, your host, and today we're going to be taking a look at the board game Horror House by Action GT. This game came out in 1986. It was actually originally a Bandai board game uh, from Japan. Then it was brought over to us with the Bandai brand and then was later reprinted again under Action GT, which is what you see before me. Now, I actually own three copies of this game, one being the Bandai version that's Japanese. I just currently don't have it on me. It's still in the mail to me now. Sorry. <laughs> I'll be showing a video to kind of display how that looks in terms of the visual differences, but I'll also be showing imagery that I found just so you get an idea. There's not too much of a difference, um, but we'll get there when we get there. Now, this game I've been on the hunt for for a long time, and I'm so happy I got it. Right when I got it, it seemed that back to back, I just immediately started finding copies. I had been looking for a little over a year to obtain this game, and there was a point where I just got fed up with it and I just started reaching out to people to see who would sell it to me and eventually someone bit and I am so thankful they did. Uh, while I did find copies later, there were certain things I was looking for. Uh, when I originally got it, I got the red death head that you see before you. I was really looking for the green death head and when I noticed there were two differences and the red one was rare, I wanted to own both of them. But there was a catch. I wanted one of them to be the Bandai version because the box art looked absolutely amazing. I honestly prefer it over the Action GT, even though a lot of people surprisingly enjoy the Action GT one more. We're all different. But the game is interesting. It's a very horror, um, Japanese horror themed game. And it can be a little intense for uh, young adults. Um, but let's first take a look at the components. Let's first start with the box art. Just take a look at this. This is the Action GT one. You'll see here you have this really nice painted look to it. You see the death head in the middle. You see the player pawn piece there standing on the green death head, which we'll talk a little bit in a moment here because it actually doesn't look like that in this game. You have the crucifix piece going into the death skull's mouth. You have these demons, this grim reaper. Oh, this Dracula, it's such a beautiful piece here. And then on the side, you have kind of a live look as to what the game looks like. And the Action GT logo, just everything blends so nicely. Even the sides of the box, just everything kind of replicates that centerpiece artwork. Oh man, now diving into it more, you'll even see the instructions in the game look really well designed also. You see the monsters drawn onto the page, which uh, I just love looking at these. You see the kind of hand drawn or the kind of cartoony how to plays and all of the like systematics of how the game works on how to kind of handle the death head. There's just so many nice imagery pieces in this instruction manual. I absolutely had to call attention to it because it looks amazing. Now moving on to the player board. Oh man, the painted look continues. It's really nice. It has a really well 3D depth to it in showing that tower to kind of show that there's a bit of some darkness trapped between the walls. It looks so great. It's simplistic enough to read. Everything's so cleanly placed on here. The text, while there are areas where it's small, it's not hard to read, well placed. So as a graphic designer, very much appreciate it. You'll see monsters poking out on the corners of each of the areas. Ugh, it just looks great. The horror house text, absolutely love it. The little blood spills on the side look fantastic. You even have kind of this design of this um, death monster here. Um, where it, it's kind of like a replica of 
uh, the Death Skull. It's actually the King of Demons, which is a card which we'll show off in a little bit. And it just has so much more nice artwork. You got the Tower of Snakes, the Body um, Desiccation Vault. You got the Werewolves Den. It's definitely a more intense horror game in terms of the wording and kind of what it's representing. I'm sure some of you guys may not um, really appreciate this or may want like their child playing a game like this. So that's something to consider when looking at this. The artwork is fun enough to not be too terrifying but also intense enough to get the point across to what that monster represents. Another cool feature of the board too is on the back of the board you'll actually see all the art on all the playing cards along with all the pieces that come in the game. This allows you to know inventory as to what you need in your game if you're missing something and it's also a way too where maybe later you can end up scanning it and printing it out in case you do lose maybe a single card or or some of your tokens get too damaged and you just want to print them on something a little bit better um, so that's something else to note here too that may help you at some point to know now moving on we place the death head where that um, really nice painted image is and the death skull looks absolutely awesome it has these steps which the player pawns will move across and then it has these tokens that go around it we'll talk a little bit about those in a moment also even have this nice spinner which says uh, kazam or kapow um, which will again we'll get into where that stands and there's numbers on it as you can guess that's where the movement comes in play it all being self-contained is awesome it takes C batteries and it's actually a, a record player board game which you wouldn't be able to tell because everything's so well contained but it's another one to my collection of record player board games and man do I enjoy this one so much it actually has three sounds that come out of it uh, five I believe different variations so there's two different screams screams meaning that you've defeated the monster there's two different laughs laughs meaning the monster defeated you and there's also kind of some clashing sword sound um, which means that you swap out whatever monster you have for another monster but again we'll get into an understanding on that when we get to the gameplay um but the death skull that i initially got was red there's also this green one um which comes in the more common one the red uh, from what i found is on a rare model um, which only was available in the action gt version it wasn't available in the bandai version continuing on with the components you have the player pawn pieces now remember on the box that it honestly it looked like a priest that's actually what you get in the bandai version this one actually has a knight um with a sword i'm guessing this was kind of uh bringing it to the um uh, English they didn't really like the translation of it being a priest so they decided to make it into a knight to make it a little more friendly along with the um, kind of player piece which you'll see in the picture is actually a crucifix the priest is putting a crucifix into the demon while the knight is putting this sword piece into the demon uh, death skull trying to defeat it um so it's like you're slaying the monster rather than you know um, doing like an exorcism on it which is probably something you don't want to display for young children yeah then you have this really nicely designed deck the back again shows the king of demons and all of the cards have different monsters this is so nice to see the monsters look absolutely amazing the artwork is just phenomenal all that painted look there and most of it is Japanese um, horror. There's some basic universal horror creatures um, such as Dracula, um, but the game just has so many unique creatures here, and the cards actually have descriptions, which are awesome. They really add to the theme of the game, so reading it out loud is a must, and man do I enjoy doing that. It's just so creepy. You got some that have keys, different color keys, which can help you get through certain rooms, and honestly, defeating monsters is going to be really important and then finally you have the boss monsters um, which you will fight um, once you get around the death skull um, when you flip those tokens because the, there's two types of tokens one that shows a sword which you're good the other one shows kind of a skull which reveals these boss monsters which are also awesome you got the king of demons the wolfman frankenstein tengu the grim reaper and dracula 
and these look so great and follow the same artistic work that I expect and there's also these nice descriptions on them also and they have other side effects that happen when you lose. You have another card which is the same size as those which is the Guardian Spirit card. Um, this will allow you to pass through all doors without using a key or saying the magic word. We'll get to why this is important but man this is a useful card to have in the game trust you have these other pieces here which are these magic passes um, these will help you later in the game once you get to the labyrinth maze um, but we'll talk a little bit more when we get to that point also so your player pawns start on the start position you spin the spinner on the death skull and depending on the number that it lands on depends on the number of spaces that you move and as you see here on the board there is a spot that says zero and man did I find that number coming up more than I'd like it to so um, if you're trying to do a faster game, uh, one of the things that we ended up testing was making the zero a 10. Um, that way the game moves a little bit quicker and getting a zero isn't so unfortunate. The other thing to note too, the death skull actually has a serpent on one of the ends there with a little tongue that sticks out. I know a lot of versions have the tongue that's kind of broken off or it's a little bit curled into where you can't really see it defined so well, but it is there. So when you're spinning the spinner, make sure you're going based off of where the tongue is pointed and not the little lip onto the spinner itself that you'll notice on the opposite end. A lot of people make that mistakes, especially when I've seen people talk about the game. I know it's an easier nub, but come on, keep with the theme and make it with the serpent it looks awesome once you get to a spot that you say that you got to stop at on your next turn you spin the spinner you can either say kazam or kapow while you're spinning it rapidly and when you release if it lands on the one that you called out you get to enter the room and fight a monster there are different features that happen in each of the areas we'll go through them here in the mask room if you win you go to the guillotine room um, which immediately allows you to fight another monster. If not, you go to the exit, which is right next to the mask room. Not so bad here. When you go to the guillotine room, if you win, you go to the exit, um, which is nice there. Uh, but if you go to the lose, you return to the entrance, which means that you're at the stop point where you'll have to do the Kazam Kapow to re-enter it. Then you have the monster's tower. If you land there, you get to take a monster card from the stack and you keep it, which is definitely going to be valuable in this game. It's one of the only free spots here. So be warned, those little wins end up being big wins later in the game. Then you move through and you'll see another stop. You have the water prison. In the water prison, if you win, you go to the exit. If you lose, you go to the never open closet which is stay here until another player spins a four. Not you, another player. So you might be there for a little bit, but I promise it won't be that bad. Now moving through, you have the torture chamber. This is my least favorite room, I'm going to be honest with you, because if you win, you go to the exit, fantastic. But if you lose, you go to the weeping room, which the weeping room is obnoxious. You spin three times, if the total is eight or more, you go to the next space. Then the next space, if it's nine or more, you go to the next space. Then if it's 10 or more, to the next space, and then finally you exit. That's a pain in the butt. Getting through that is absolutely annoying. Continuing on you have the all the player coming last to join you here that means a player who's all the way stuck maybe even in the never open closet just gets to immediately get a jump start and appear there that's awesome i love it when it happens to be honest with you even though it's annoying when your opponent gets an advantage like that um then moving through you have the room of blood which if you battle you go and you win you go to the foot of the stairs of death which starts to get you onto the death head if you lose. Uh, you exit and give up one monster card, which sucks. If you don't have any, you don't give any up, but trust me, you will have some by then. Now you're going through, um, going around the death head, and this is where you'll start battling the boss monsters, which will be super crucial. And trust me, you want to win as many battles as you can because losing those boss monster battles have really annoying consequences. I'll let you find that out. I'll let you find that out if 
um, when you get the game if that's something you're interested in. Uh, you can also go in online. BoardGameGeek.com has a link to a fan website which you can take a look at what all the cards say. It's really awesome. The artwork is great and you can admire it all there too again. Now you have the body of Desiccation Vault which if you win you go to the Tower of Snakes which is this nice little spinny loop which can bring you back to the center and it can keep looping you around. That one can be a pain too. So try to avoid that, uh, but also losing can be even worse because then you go to the punishment cell, which the punishment cell isn't where you want to go because it's all the way down um, underneath where that death skull is, where the bottom of it is, and you got to work your way all the way through. Then you go to the pit, uh, the Tower of Snakes, and then you work your way to escape into the werewolf's den. If you uh, when you go to the exit, if not, you go to the screaming room, which the screaming room's annoying because you have a bunch of stops where you got to keep landing the Kazam or Kapow, which is a pain in the butt. Then you're going through to the exit, the werewolf's den, and this is where not having a magic pass will suck. If you have one, you go through and you start making your way through the labyrinth. If not, then you got to go through this little side entrance and you got to wait for a pass here. That means when someone else uses it to enter it, they give it up and you end up getting yours, which can delay time. And honestly, it's almost impossible to win at that point if you don't have one. I'll be completely honest with you. But I've seen it happen, so don't be too discouraged. Just know you're at a pretty big disadvantage. Then you're moving through the... Uh, labyrinth here and as you're moving through if you end up stopping on any space that has one of these uh, monsters um, they get to spin the dial and they get to move a certain amount of spaces if they catch up with you then you have to fight them if you lose then you go back to the doormat so it doesn't matter if you lose early to the yellow slug room the red spider web the golden bat haunt the lizard lair or the green cats room all of them will bring you all the way back to the doormat so that's a pain now ways you can avoid some of these sentry monsters in the maze labyrinth is with the guardian spirit card if you end up obtaining this then you can go through any door um without obviously saying the magic word but also if you're in in the like century in the maze then if it discovers you you will be pardoned but only once and if you lose or if the century finds you pass the card on to the following player and if you end up in the guard room you must stop there until you win if not you are going to be stuck there for a while which is an easy way for players to catch up then you make your way through to the finish. The first player to get to the finish escapes the horror house and the others are trapped forever. Now things that can be a pain in the game. When you're moving through around the Death Skull path, there are those tokens and man do they slide around a lot. That's a pain, especially when you're trying to move through and you're not trying to knock things over and then your player kind of slides, knocks another players down because they don't stand up very well onto the Death Skull. That's something I found annoying. I don't believe it was much of an issue with the Bandai version with the priest pieces because they were a little bit smaller, but with the knight pieces, it's a bit of a pain. So be weary of that. The other pain point in the game is the sound effects can be a little bit loud. And for some people that can be a little annoying. You don't really have a way to adjust that. I know there's an adjustment piece in the battery compartment, but that seems to adjust speed from what I've been told. Not so much the audio. I haven't gotten it in terms of lowering the audio. So so that may be a pain point for some of you and the randomness this game is a random game don't think you're gonna get strategy and understanding that you're out thinking your opponent in this game because you're not you're literally using a spinner to move randomly and you are putting a sword into a record player which displays sounds randomly so you're not getting any upper advantage in the game you just get lucky in the game but the theme is awesome and I love it for that I'm not I'm not one to complain about games that are too random, that's just something to note because I know for some of you it will be a big pain point for you and something you'll try to avoid. The other thing in the game is when the deck runs out, you reshuffle them and you go through the monsters again. I wish there were a lot more monsters, almost maybe double 
the amount of monsters at least so if you do end up seeing them you won't see another monster very often that way when you're reading it out loud you're not rereading the same one over again because yes i make people read it again because i want to hear it again (laughs) but those are a few things that you might want to stay away from or might actually lure you away from the game which would save you some money but i do very much enjoy it now let's talk a little bit about the price point the price point on this game is steep i would not recommend it for the high prices unless you're a big collector and you love horror because this is the best horror game i own i will straight up tell you that now i own quite a number of uh, horror games especially some really rare ones that you'll be seeing soon this month but this game was the hardest one for me to obtain and it is a bit high you'll probably find it in the 150 to 200 dollar range If you're lucky, a little bit lower, but I haven't really seen it go very often under $100 complete and working. So finding a good deal on it when you actually find it for sale is pretty tricky. Make sure you check the descriptions when you do find them on eBay because they may not be complete or they may not be working. So make sure you get a working death head and even sometimes if you don't, as long as it's not completely gutted, there's a way to fix it. I have friends who have fixed theirs and there's plenty of resources online to kind of guide you through on how to get there. Yeah, but the game is absolutely amazing. I I honestly am so happy to have in my collection and if again if this is the kind of game for you I honestly think it's worth the plunge and that price point it is very good you get a lot out of it if you're willing to play it but again there are some flaws such as the time length can vary sometimes you can do a shorter game I've yet to see a lot of shorter games they can end up being an hour and a half maybe even two hours I've finished a few games in an hour um, but that's with everyone knowing the game so if you're going in not knowing the rules it may take a bit longer you may end up in the two hour mark so be aware of that too Um, the scream itself can be a little obnoxious also it is a bit loud so that's something to be wary of too but these are things that didn't bug me at all I just love the theme you get so engulfed in it And honestly, that's really all I have to say about it. It's hard to recommend a game that's this high in price and this hard to find. But man, if horror games is your thing, try to keep your eyes peeled for this one. You will not regret it. But that's honestly all I have for you guys today. If you're interested in notifications, there is a bell up there somewhere. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate any feedback. I'm trying to make these videos more and more outrageous. And with your guys' help, I have been doing so. Monday, regular board game reviews. Wednesday, weekly update slash talks. And then on Fridays, my vintage board game reviews. That is all I have for you guys today. I will see you guys next time.